Hi, Geo Gypsy here visiting Tumakakri National Historic Site. My first mission and also Arizona's first mission. I was a little apprehensive about visiting this site. As a park ranger who worked at Mesa Verde, I know how hard it is to interpret America's first people. But I was also interested to learn more and share the story here. So let's go explore. Tumacacari National Historic Site, located along the Santa Cruz River in southeastern Arizona, was once a cultural crossroads faced with cooperation and conflict. Beginning with the first people we call the Tohonam Otham, and later visited by both Jesuit and Franciscan missionaries before abandonment of almost a hundred years. I walked to the river after touring the church, surrounding grounds, and visitor center museum, and I'll share that in just a bit. first people, we call the Tohonamotam, lived along the Santa Cruz River Valley. They hunted rabbit and deer, gathered acorns, mesquite beans, cactus pads, buds, and fruits, grew corn, beans, squash, and cotton, and wove baskets from wetland reeds. They lived in harmony with the land and mostly with their Apache and Pima neighbors. This is the access route to the river. I'm not real keen on crossing over on these pieces of wood because I'm my balance sucks. So maybe if I found a stick to use to help me with that. Because I really don't want to fall into the water or end up with wet feet. But I'm not seeing any sticks that look really good. So if I fall in and my camera goes under, well, I guess. I'll be in trouble then, huh? All right, let's see what happens. I'm not good at this stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, let me fall. Oh. Well, it seems as though I crossed that little stream we without falling in, and oh, I'm so glad I did, because now we actually come to the river. In January 1691, the Jesuit Father Kino led the first Europeans to an Ohotam village and started the Makakori mission and community for teaching the native people the Spanish way of life, farming, religion, speaking Spanish, and how to build using mud bricks called adobe. Spaniards brought wheat, pork, beef, chicken, olives, peaches, pomegranates, figs, apricots, and oranges. In 1767, King Charles III of Spain banished the Jesuits from all his realms 
and the Franciscans took over. In 1800, they began work on the church. Although not built as originally planned, the church was completed in 1822 after almost 25 years of construction. The front of the church was brightly painted with columns of red, Egyptian-style capitals yellow with black markings, and the statue niches, niches were blue. The adjacent bell tower has scalloped shell niches for St. James the Apostle, patron of laborers. Entering a long hall of the nave, niches lined the walls where statues of saints stood with candles below. Immediately to the right of the door is a small room called the Baptistry and stairs leading to the bell tower and choir loft located directly above the door, but no longer there. The opposite end of the hall is the sanctuary, with a domed ceiling made of strong-fired adobe bricks. Most of the church's vertical walls were made of the mud adobe bricks, then covered with plaster, etched, and painted. And there's even some of the original paints. After abandonment in 1848, the roof was removed and local settlers reused the timbers. Okay, this is where the Padres would have changed their clothes. Okay. And then they would have walked up these steps because the the pulpit is right on the other side. No. And there's where the pulpit would have been, coming up those stairs. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Altar. There would have been all kinds of religious artifacts here that were removed, actually, when the people left here. The visitor center was built from 1935 to 37 of adobe and plaster by local workers, including the Civilian Conservation Corps, known as the CCC. They used New Deal project funds and oriented the building to provide an amazing view of the church. Okay, oh, what a delightful clay pot, huh? Resembling a snake pattern on the side. Right? Here you make tools out of antlers and bone. Ooh, that's a pretty cool. A stone mescal knife? Wow! Holy moly. That's pretty cool. And we have a picture of a pronghorn. Actually, I didn't get to see any. Oh, look at this. We have the, the pole for grinding. And we have the mapate as well. And we actually, looks like we have um, a stone axe. Nice. And the basketry is so beautiful. Maybe I need to learn to make baskets. And we have a prehistoric bird and a horned lizard. I'm sorry. Father, I didn't mean to interrupt you. The orchard was restored in 2007 after much searching for historic orchards for trees to take grafts and gather seeds. Species include quince, pomegranate, fig, apple, plum, apricot, peach, olive, and orange trees. Wow, that made me hungry. Thanks for joining me on today's tour of Tumacacari National Historical Site. 
I hope you'll like, subscribe, and share.